Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 13 of my Alchemy video tutorial series in Logic Pro 10. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can actually import an image file, an actual PNG image file, into Alchemy and convert an image into sound, which is really cool for creating some kind of cool soundscapes like we're going to do today. Um, we're going to be using the Spectral Engine, just like we did uh, in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that, I highly recommend you watch that one first before you dive into this one. So just to give you guys an idea of something you can do with this, um, I've got this sort of soundscapey patch with an arpeggiator on it. And that's uh, just being played, uh, just basically four chords along with this little simple drum beat here. So let me play a little bit of this, um, just to give you an idea of what you can come up with this. All right, so that's pretty cool. Um, let me turn off the arpeggiator, because the arpeggiator is really creating a lot of the motion. Um, with the arpeggiator off, we're going to hear the the soundscape pretty much dry. Well, not dry, It's there's a lot of effects on it, but we're going to hear it without the arpeggiated motion. All right, so to create the patch that you just heard, I actually used a combination of two separate image files plus two uh, synthesizer patches all layered together. Um, the image on the right is just a, it's a, it's basically a painting that's on my wall in my living room. Um, and then the one on the left is just something I found that looked cool on the internet. Um, believe it or not, again, it's, I know it sounds crazy, but Alchemy has the ability to import an image file and convert that image file to sound. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I am going to turn off this EQ setting that I have on here. It was just there to boost the bass a, lit, a bit, uh, scoop out some of the mids, and boost some of the highs. So I'm going to turn that off for now, mute the drums for now, and we're going to go into a fresh alchemy patch and start from scratch. So let me just clear the patch. Let's go to the Advanced tab. We'll go to Source A. We're going to, under Additive, turn off. The additive oscillator under VA, turn off the, the VA oscillator. Uh, that's going to turn off all the, basically the, the stock sawtooth that's on the patch. Um, we're going to go up to the edit window. Make sure we're in the spectral tab. Go to image. And we're going to go to import image. And the name of the image file is uh, red, black. It's a PNG file, even though the extension isn't showing. Uh, what I found is that... Alchemy can import PNG files, but cannot import JPEG files. I haven't tried it with GIF files or other other image formats, but I've tried it with PNGs and JPEGs, and it does not. Um, it it will not import JPEGs, but it will import J, uh, M, uh, PNG files. So I just, if I end up with a JPEG, I just open it up in Photoshop and then and then basically export it out as a PNG file. All right. So as you can see, we've got basically a. Uh, a blue sort of overcast looking version of the image we just imported. Um, one thing I am going to do is it sets the uh, the loop range pretty narrow. I'm going to set the loop range to cover the full length of the image, left to right. Not that it's really going to matter. We're not really going to ever really play through the full analysis of the entire image anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'll put it in forward and back. Again, it doesn't really matter. Um, Let's hear what this sounds like. Let me just arm the track and I'll play middle C on the keyboard. Well, that was not pleasant. Let's play a little lower. Even less pleasant. So you'll find when you import images into Alchemy, you're not generally going to get 
um, a nice sound right off the bat. There's a lot of modulation you have to apply to this to get to where you want it to be. Um, I want this to sort of sound like an ambient atmosphere, um, and that's what we're going to do with it. Um, but we're going to have to go, we're going to have to do some things to this to, uh, to make it work. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to go into mask mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmask most of the image from about three quarters of the way down. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is with the lasso tool. I'm just going to drag straight across, create a little circle here. And it should load in just a moment. It takes, a, it takes just a moment because the image is pretty big. There we go. What I'm also going to do is there's this little X in the image that I like a lot. And it's going to provide some spectral content that I really like. So I'm going to go to the, uh, the brush tool. I'm going to go to the blurred circle. Up the size a bit. And I'm just going to sort of expose the, the ends of this little X here. I just like, uh, I like the way that sounds. You can hear sort of an upward and downward sweep on this little X shape here. And there's another one kind of here. Let's try to pull that out a bit. And I apologize for the lagginess. It's not any more or less laggy on my end. It's this, I'm getting the exact same amount of lag you guys are. It's just because the image is big and it's, it's not exactly easy to work with. There we go. Let's try pulling some of that stuff out. All right, let me play that. Okay, so it's not exactly uh, great sounding, but it's a little bit better than than before. Okay, so let's um, let's close out the edit window. And let's try to make this sound more like a soundscape. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pull in the high cut and pull up the low cut. I really just want to scoop up, scoop out some of those uh, those upper overtones. I'm also going to add on the main effects bus the convolution reverb and once again just like in the last video I'm going to use the uh, warped reverb setting called uh, black hole let's also go to the main uh, envelope and we'll pull the attack up a, a bit pull the re release out a bit there we go and then another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to modulate the high and low frequency um, cut on the bandpass filter. So I'm going to right click on the high cut, go to add modulation, go to LFO 1. And LFO 1 is going to, I'm going to pull the depth down a bit. And let's modulate this with something that's a little more random looking. Maybe something like that. Maybe I'm going to unsync it and I'm going to make it go a little bit slower. Maybe even a little bit slower. Cool. So I got some little whistles in there that are kind of cool. Uh, let's go to the low pass, uh, the low frequency cut, I should say. Uh, let's modulate that with a new LFO. And we'll do the same thing. We'll pull the depth down quite a bit, and we'll choose sort of like a very slow, unsynced um, LFO, something that's it's a little bit more random looking. There we go. So really all this is there for is just to give us some variation in, in the filter. Okay, so that sounds okay. Um, that's sort of our like our, like an ambient whistling sound. Uh, let's also add a delay to this on the main effects bus. Let's try that. I'm going to turn the low pass filters on for both of these.
Cool. It sounds like uh, R2-D2 is haunting me in my sleep, but that's that's okay. That works just fine. All right, cool. So we've got that initial sound. Let's layer that with another sound. Let me just choose the... I'm going to choose a sawtooth for uh, source B. Um, on this one, I'm going to pull up the number of voices, detune it a bit. Uh, I'm going to pull in the low-pass filter quite a bit. This is going to be like a bass voice, like a drone bass. Um, and let's pull it, go ahead and pull this down an octave so the semitones will go down to negative 12. And let's just uh, solo this now by itself, just see what it sounds like. Alright, let's modulate the detuning a bit. We'll modulate that with another LFO. Not that much though, just a little bit. We'll choose something a little bit more random again. There we go. Yeah, I think we'll leave the sync alone. That's good enough for now. Uh, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to create a send. Instead of going to uh, filter 1 and filter 2, I'm going to go to filter 1 effects A. And down on effects A, I'm going to add a second type of reverb just for the bass here. So go to convolution reverb. We use um, large spaces, plate reverbs. And we'll use the, let's try the, the big plate. You probably won't hear a whole lot of it just because there's so much reverb on the signal already. I just want it to be very, very ambient. I really don't even really want to hear the buzz of the saw in there um, too much. All right, voice C. Let's go up to, actually, first let's listen to voice uh, A and B together. Cool. Let's go to voice C. Let's add another voice in here. I'm just going to turn off A and B. On this one, same thing. We're going to turn off the additive oscillator as well as the uh, VA oscillator. We're going to go to the edit window under spectral and we're going to import another image. This time we're going to use the red blue PNG file. It's a little bit smaller file, so it should have, shouldn't have quite as much problem importing. Let's see what this sounds like. Now this one's actually pretty cool. Um, let me turn the loop mode to forward back again, and also set a, a wider loop range. Again, not that we're actually going to use it, but it's just to sort of get it out of the way. Now that one's actually really cool sounding. I'm not going to mask it or anything. I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, I am going to filter it a bit, cut some of the high end out. That's actually really cool sounding, even just by itself. And then lastly, uh, well, first of all, let's listen to A, B, and C all at the same time now. Cool. And let's try um, D just by itself. Let's add D in. On D, let's use um, let's use the one of the dark patches, and we're gonna create sort of like a um, something that's synced to the clock, something that's gonna give this some some musical motion, some rhythmic motion. Um, so what I'll do with this one is I'll detune it. I'll pull in the uh, low pass filter. And what I'll do is I'll take the volume and I'm going to modulate that with a sequencer. Go sequencer one here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just try to randomize it. I don't want this, any swing in it though. I'll pull the attack up so it's a little bit softer.
kind of a cool little pattern there. Let's modulate the pan with a uh, new LFO. This one will unsync it, make it real slow. Actually, let's do like a different shape, a little more random shape. Pull the uh, depth down a bit. I'll pull the, the rate up a bit a little bit here. Another thing I'm going to do with this, this one is I'm going to I'm going to modulate the sync knob, which I really like to do. Gives it kind of a cool effect like that. So let's right click on that. We'll modulate that with a, a fifth LFO. Pull the depth down a little bit. And we'll make this one really, really slow. And let's try a different shape here. Cool. Now let's try all four sources together. Let's see what we've got. So I think the very first one, the whistly one's a little too loud. I'm going to pull that down. And I think um, source D, let's try bumping that up two octaves, 24 semitones. Cool. Now let's try that with our chords out here. Um, let's see if that sounds any good. I pulled um, a little of the low end out in some of the some of the voices. Uh, let's try it with this EQ too. This EQ has got a little bit of a bass boost, but the uh, the low end's been scooped out a little bit, um, and the mid the mid lows have been scooped out a bit. So let's see what it sounds like with this. Let's try it from the beginning again. Now what I did in the original example was I turned an arpeggiator on as well, just turned it on in the um, the down mode, um, just to see what this did for us. Let's see what that does for this patch. Cool. Let's try that with the uh, let's try that with the drums and see what that sounds like. Now I realize I'm not really playing this like a soundscape. Um, if I were to play this like a soundscape, it really wouldn't have an arpeggiator on it. It really wouldn't have anything that lends to sort of like a rhythmic feel. It'd be more about just like landing on a drone and staying on that drone and playing a few notes and then moving to another chord or another bass note and slowly evolving the soundscape along. So soundscapes really at their, at their heart are slow moving entities. They're not like the chord progression for a song that changes every beat or every bar or every couple of bars. So 
Uh, let me just try something with the arpeggiator off here. And I'm just going to try to play around with it, and uh, we'll close out the video with that. Let me try pulling this dark patch down an octave, too, because it seems to be a bit too bright. And I'll play around with a little something and see if I can't create something that's a little bit more soundscapey. So there you go. Uh, that's just uh, importing image files to create uh, ambient textures in Alchemy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you really, really would like to support the channel, please leave me a contribution at patreon.com. Our uh, site address at Patreon is patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. So once again, thanks for the support and thanks for watching.